There's something new blowing in the wind, and it's not a hurricane or tornado. It's something new. It's safety. It's a totally new concept that's been around for years, but few are taking advantage. It's called the science of cause and avoidance of accidents. With all of today's new technology and new emphasis on safety, why are so many companies still facing high frequencies of injuries? Despite all the training efforts and development of written safety procedures, the injuries just seem to keep piling up. Perhaps not in your company, but in many organizations. Let's take a quick look at what we're talking about. Okay, let's go back and review these accidents again from a different perspective. What was the cause of this accident? Obviously, the pallet was sitting in the aisleway, creating a classic trip and fall hazard. What's the avoidance? The avoidance is simply placing the pallet in an area where it does not become a tripping hazard and more importantly, for the person walking in this area to watch where he is going. The avoidance is twofold, with the primary emphasis on watching where you walk. The second avoidance is making sure you don't leave potential hazards where they can become injuries or accidents. So far, we haven't revealed any mysterious secrets about accident cause and avoidance. 
It's very close to common sense in thinking about safety before you perform the task. Everyone should realize by now what every safety professional all over the world already knows, and that is, there is no such thing as an accident. Every incident has a cause, and therefore accidents can be avoided. This is why safety inspections and removal of potential hazards are important. Thinking about safety on every job also helps reduce potential hazards by not creating situations where accidents can occur. There are generally two types of training in the workplace for the prevention of injuries, pre-incident and post-incident training. Most companies only provide pre-incident training. This is training based on contemplation of hazards associated with the employee's job function. In many cases, this activity is very general, with exception to training requirements for formally written programs, such as lockout, tagout, forklift training, and others. Post-incident training is performed after a specific event that could or did result in an injury. This is the key activity in implementing a cause and avoidance program. After an incident, a meeting between the supervisor and the employee should occur as soon after the event as possible, usually within the first 24 hours. During this meeting, an incident form should be completed, giving a brief description of what happened the nature of any resulting injury, and the names of witnesses. The supervisor should then adjourn the meeting, informing the employee that he will be called back for a second meeting after the supervisor has had an opportunity to further investigate the incident and meet with all witnesses. Once the supervisor's investigation is complete, usually within 48 hours, the employee should be notified to come back for a second meeting. By now, the supervisor has determined the cause and should have equally good perception on what measures the company should take to avoid the injury in the future. Even more importantly, what action should the employee take to avoid a repeat of this incident? Many times a procedure was in place, but the employee chose not to follow proper procedures. Management and the employee should join together to successfully participate in cause and avoidance of an injury. Once this valuable retraining session has occurred, management has a better trained employee in the workforce and someone who can also assist fellow workers in avoiding the same type of incident. How about a simple back injury? Must the supervisor go through the entire procedure for something as simple as a back injury? Absolutely. To properly implement a cause and avoidance program, it is absolutely essential you follow the entire sequence. Let's take a look at the process. Number one, training employees in the proper work and safety rules and procedures is the first step. After all, how can you hold someone accountable for something for which they may not know? Training should be extensive. New employee orientation, specific job assignments, 
equipment training, policies, procedures, and other required training programs. Training is expensive, takes time away from jobs, but the alternative of having poorly trained employees is much more expensive. Training in site-specific job functions is also a requirement. Number two, let's add another step in the training process. It's very important, but perhaps one of the most forgotten steps. It gets left behind because everyone assumes it is being done, and that is supervision. What do we mean when we say it's the most forgotten step? Supervisors have very important jobs and they supervise every day. So why is that a forgotten step? It doesn't make much sense. Let's explain. Yes, supervisors are the keys to accident prevention and they do have very busy and important job responsibilities. However, because they are busy and have important job responsibilities, some supervisors neglect to follow up on any training that is provided. This means the supervisor may not attend the employee training session and may not know what was presented in the training program. Then, when the employees return to work, supervisors assume they fully understand everything that was included in the training program. The supervisor assumes the training was successful and employees will adhere to all the points explained in the training program. Generally, this is the weakest link in the training process. For training to be effective, it must be practiced on a daily basis. Supervisors must enforce the training and make sure everyone understood the information. If not, it's up to the supervisor to reinforce this training with hands-on participation or additional coaching. The first step in a post-incident training is to find out what happened. The supervisor discusses the incident with the victim and witnesses. This is basically a fact-finding step, so an investigation may be completed. This discussion with employee usually occurs within 24 hours of incident, if at all possible. Next, there must be a meeting with employee, usually within 48 hours of incident. This meeting fully discusses the incident, what happened, why it happened, and all the factors that were found in the investigation. The primary reason for the meeting is for the employee to fully understand the who, what, when, why, and how of the incident. By understanding exactly what happened and what caused the incident, the employee has greater knowledge on how to prevent a similar incident. There must be an agreement between the supervisor and employee, so there is no misunderstanding or difference of opinion as to what caused the incident. Through agreement, both parties understand their responsibilities a bit better, and the chances of avoiding future incidents are greatly increased. The agreement and other information must be in writing for full documentation and understanding what is expected of both supervision and the employee. The science of cause and avoidance is new, but then again, it's a very old and experienced method of reducing accidents and injuries. The science simply reinforces the fact that it works. When you use the science of cause and avoidance of accidents, something happens. Accidents and injuries are reduced. When you leave out a step or fail to properly investigate or properly supervise, then the system breaks down. If you fail to write it down and fully document the process, the system breaks down. When all the factors of cause and avoidance are used properly, it's a powerful tool. Accidents and injuries can be reduced, but the proper procedures must be followed. So remember, we want everyone to avoid being hurt on the job. However, if an injury does occur, then management and the employees alike should learn from the mistake so that the future is safer for everyone. Cause and avoidance is everyone's responsibility.